So to begin, <clears throat> I would like to wish all the teachers and kempos from the uh, monasteries, the uh, the teachers, and particularly all the uh, nuns from the shedras, all the monks, and all the uh, Dharma friends who are watching over the internet. So tashidele. So today I will continue speaking about the topic of following the gurus. <clears throat> so I thought that maybe I should start by speaking about the third stanza of the praise he followed, he searched thoroughly. So the third stanza of the praise he searched thoroughly in terms of the outline or the topic as described in um shamaka country yenlock's annotations to the uh to the praise it's called how he followed the guru and to read the <clears throat> to read the root verses it says when he realized that all wishes for here and the everlasting come from the holder of all the spiritual of friend your reversible longing swelled to perfection his faith became transcendent to him i pray to give the main point of these teachings, the spiritual uh, spiritual friend is the principle or the foundation of the entire path. And so following an authentic guru is like the, the life force for all of us who practice the Dharma. And so it is very important for us to follow an authentic spiritual friend. Now, as I mentioned the other day, Mika Dorje had uh, four primary teachers, as is well known, including Sanji Nempa and the others. So there are four main teachers. And so among these four, Uh, Yasu Tashi Nanjo is probably not included in, as one of these four main teachers. However, as I mentioned the other day, Yasu Brimbache uh, uh, showed great kindness to Mikyo Dorje. He first recognized him as the uh, the one who recognized the, uh, Mikyo Dorje as the karma and enthroned him was Yasu Tashi Nanjo. And then he gave him the fasting vows of the, of the Mahayana and the vows of going forth. Fourth. And so uh, Mikhi Dorje said that he was very kind. So he was the first of all the lamas that Mikhi Dorje followed in his lifetime. So now I'd like to show you give you a show you show a picture of uh should so that you may know who he is and what year he was born and and what year he passed away so i'm showing you this now if you look at this this is an old tankar an old painting uh, that is kept in the uh, in the ladrang of uh, of gyatsa Rinpoche. It was probably uh, painted during the time of the sixth Gyatsa, uh, uh, Gyatsa, um, sixth Gyatsa. So during the time of the tenth, the, the latter part of the life of the uh, tenth karma up in the early part of the life of the eleventh. So here in this picture, it says he had hair, right? So as when Mikhi Dorje first met. Uh, uh, so, uh, has long hair. And so just as Mikhi Dorje said when he first met Tashi Namjo, uh, now you, you didn't used to have long hair and now you do. And Mikhi Dorje also said that he also had somewhat uh, not the best conduct. And so here, if we look at this picture, we can see this clearly. Now the year that he was born in is 
1487. And the year he passed away, it was 1515. So he only lived to the age of 29. And the second, his second Lama was Sanjin Yampa Rinpoche. And this is a Tonka from the Golden Garland of the Kaju, uh, the Monastery. It's one of 40 Tonkas. So he was he was born somewhere around 1450. Now it's difficult to tell. We uh, to tell. We still need to research this. The year he passed away was 1525. So he must have lived to about 65. Now I'm not certain. He lived into his 60s at any rate, according to the histories. After he studied with uh, Sanin Yampa Rinpoche, the next, the third guru he followed was Dumutashi Wezer. Now, Dumutashi Wezer, his, the dates of his birth and death, I still haven't found any clear indication of his uh, year of his, uh, his birth and death. But if you but if you look at the uh, Kaju Sercheng uh, biographies, uh, you can probably guess his the year of his birth, but the, his birth year is difficult to find, I think. In any case, uh, this uh, picture shows is uh, probably one in the collection of Dumo uh, Chuje uh, Rinpoche. Uh, and so this is uh, I uh, so the first time that I've actually seen this picture. So this is Jumotashi Wezer. If you wonder what he looked like, then he probably looked, probably looked something like this. Next is, this is Kenshin Chudup Senge the one from whom he received the full ordination, the Bhikkhu vows. Uh, so his name was Ken, uh, Kenja Chudup Senge. So among his four gurus, he is considered one of Mikya Dorje's four main gurus. He was born in 1451 and passed away in 1530. So he probably lived around 80 years. This Tonga comes, comes from uh, is from the uh, Tonga of Mikya Dorje in the Kaji Searching. On either side, there are several different uh, lamas are painted and so painted there. And so I have uh, enlarged the image of Chudup Senge from that Tonga. Oh, this is mistaken. <laughs> and so this made a mistake here with Kamatunipa. So Kamatunipa. So this is, I've got the wrong picture. I put the, I got too too much in a rush. So I put the um, history of uh, Penja Chachapa. So, so tomorrow I'll put the right picture of Kamatunipa. I'll show you the correct picture of Kamatunipa. So excuse me on that one. But in any case, Kamatunipa, was born in 1456, and he passed away in 1513, excuse me, 1531. But that is not the right uh, uh, picture. That is uh, Penjin uh, Shachok's uh, uh, picture. So I've spoken of the four main teachers, Sanjin Yempa, Dulmotashi Wezer, in addition, Kenjin Chudut Senge, and Kama Chunepa. These are considered the uh, four teachers. And then in addition, there's Jyatsaptashi Namja. And so now I've given you an introduction and shown you their picture. So next, 
I would like to give an introduction to Dulmutashi Wizard. So when I gave the introduction to Sanjay Nempers from Bishe, when uh, Sanjay Nempers uh, passed away, uh, we did. So what was the situation, Mika Dorje's situation at that time that Nempers and Bishe passed away? Uh, and then after that, Mikio Dorje did, uh, uh, built a statue, a memorial statue of Sanjay Nyambar Bishay. And there are many signs uh, that of, of it being blessed. So later, that sutra uh, was later brought to its uh, uh, super monastery. And this is called the, uh, it's called the space statue, the Nguku Barmam Barnang. So this is a, uh, it's one of the main monast uh, statues at super, uh, super monastery. It's a bit, uh, statues of uh, Sanya, uh, uh, of Super Monastery. So generally, when so normally when uh, when the remains of someone are brought up to uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, cemetery, and so the tradition is to bring us uh, uh, the remains to the cor a corporate uh, to to the charnel grounds and recite the four session Guru Yoga. And if there's someone in the area who is passing away, uh, they, uh, then this, they're brought to the, uh, the, the statue is brought to them and uh, put near their, uh, the statue uh, near their house. And so that one day it's brought to them. And then that same day, it is brought back to Tsurpu Monastery. Uh, so it is considered a very sacred statue. And so I'm not going to speak so much about it right now, but I thought if I have time, I'll think I'll speak about it again later. So next, so I'd like to speak about another of Mikyo Dorje's four main teachers, Dulmutashi Wezer. So he was a direct disciple of the seventh Karma Pachura Chatsa. In addition, He was respected as being very uh, venerable in Utsang and Kam. Uh, so he was considered someone who kept his vows very purely. He first studied, uh, studied at Gandan, at Ryogeden or Gandan Monastery, one of the three great Kiluk monasteries. He studied there first. And then he went to the, see the seventh Karmapa and studied many texts with him. But he didn't merely study and listen. He also spent a long time practicing in, in isolated, isolated mountain retreats. He gave up all thoughts of any of self-interest or the eighth worldly concerns and trained himself thoroughly in cherishing others more than himself. Uh, after Jatsa Rinpoche and Sanjay Nyampa Rinpoche, he is the third guru whom Mikya Dorje followed. So these days in Tibet, when we consider the most important Kaju Lamas, we consider Dumo Chujay. And so he now, he lives in the, the region of uh, Yushu. So when you think about one of his, uh, about his previous incarnations, uh, then uh, they consider Dumo Tashiwezu to be one of his previous incarnations. Now the place that Dumo Tashiwezu was born was in Jitu, which is in the area of Jitu Zong in Yushu, I believe. Now that are the three ruling families, like the three, there are three lords. They were called the Chap Dulmoser. So these are the three uh, primary ones. And he was born as the son of the Dulmo lord. And so for that, that is the reason why he's called Dulmo Tashi Rezer. Now there are different names given for his clan. Most of the documents from the time of Mikyo Dorje uh, spell and called on they call his name do so the same name as the word for the spelling now later the dulmo the, so now there was then an l to the end so it's spelled dulmo so people probably thought that dumo was probably not so that it sounded too much like the name for a demon but in the old days it was dumo itself 
but it's the name of the clan of the of the ruling family. Now we don't know the year that he was born, and I haven't found it clearly indicated anywhere. Because there's no liberation story of Tashi Wizard. There is uh, one in the Golden Garland of Kaju biographies, and also in the uh, Feast of Scholars by Pao Tsuchikone. There is no separate biography of him, so it's difficult. Uh, so I have not been able to find uh, his birth year. But when he was young, he met the seventh Karma Pachodajasa and was given the name Tashi Wezu. So that is the name given to him by Chodajasa. He also received uh, from Chodajasa the transmission of the Mani Mantra. And then he went forth as a monk with Goshri Pajodindra. Uh, and from the time he was eight, he studied basic logic with some uh, Gilup Geshis. He went to the Rio Gandin or the Gandin Monastery and uh, became well educated in the sutras and tantras. Then he took full ordination with Chudup Sangbo in the Kenshin Shakyarishi. So, so I'm wondering. So it's not, not clear who it is. So I'm wondering if it might be the one from whom Miki Dorje also took his vows. I can't say certainly uh, categorically that he is. But he, when he took the full donation vows from him, then he also took the Sakya lineage empowerments of Chaksamvara and uh, in the traditions of uh, Lupa and Gandapada and the empowerments of the great empowerments of uh, Vajrapani. Then he went, he thought he should go back to his homeland. Now, in the old days, when he went to there, when you went to Kam, you could go the northern way or the southern route. The, the northern route, when you go uh, through Ngachuk, the area of Ngachuk, and the su southern land went through the area of Kongpo. So he was going uh, by the southern uh, southern route. And when he came to Namtu Mountain, he met uh, uh, Lord Ch Churajasa. Now, when he was young, he had met uh, Chodachasa, but he was very little at that time. But now, uh, when he was an adult, this is the first. This is the first time that he met Chodachasa as an adult. And the moment that he met him, he received the blessings and uh, felt uncontrollable faith, and gave up any thought of returning to his homeland, and continued staying with the seventh Karmapa and received experiential instructions on Mahamudra and the six yogas, instructions on Mahamak, and the particular teachings of the Karmakaju pointing out the three kayas in divisible prana and awareness, the three dohas of Saraha. Also the, uh, the, the uh, techniques on the prince, um, principle uh, found in our principles and in, in many other texts, in particular the Lanch, but the three worlds, the uh, seventh Karmapa's own commentary and the project of Mary, of project Mary. Now, this is uh, not a complete commentary, it goes up through the section on uh, Bodhicitta. Now, with the Dakarambha Chigya Temple, Dakarambha Chigya Temple wrote about this. He's the one who was the scribe when Chodachasa wrote the, uh, the, as in Vizhru. What he said at that time is if there had been a scribe such as uh, me, then Chodachasa would have been able to write the, his entire commentary on Prajnaparamita. In any case, he only wrote a portion of it. Basically, he only wrote up as far as the section on uh, Bodhicitta. But in actuality, he seems to probably originally have uh, plans of writing a text such a um, similar to his ocean of literature and logic. And so he received many texts on Sutra and Tantra of some Chodachas and became uh, well educated in this. Not only that, he went to the uh, monastic colleges in central Tibet and using the seventh Karmapa's philosophical traditions as the basis for his positions, he had public debates and discussions and became uh, quite uh, uh, rather well known for that. 
and that also at that time, uh, there was a Sidutashi Pajora. And from him, he received the five sets of five deities of Dusim Kempa and the cycles on Bernak Chen. He primarily practiced with full concentration in uh, mountain retreats and developed great qualities of abandonment of and realization. He is also said to have visions of many Yidam deities. And when you talk about the five sets of five de deities, it's something that we actually have to know uh, very well. I listed this the other day when I spoke about uh, Dusim Chempo, uh, I suppose said that one of his main activities was founding the three main seats of the um, of, of the Kamrakajir. And one of these was also uh, was the five sets of five deities of Dusim Chempo. These are his own particular five sets of five deities. So the, in the biography of Trijang Rinpoche, He said that when he went to Litang, no, I don't need to say, I don't need to tell that story. It's not certain about that. In any case, among the two, when the when the two tutors came to uh, came to Tsubu Monastery, when the two Hartsons came to Tumas, when they spoke to um, he said that they spoke to the uh, the chandri uh, the, to to the the steward the chang of super uh, and said he looked and they asked him he said well what 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 text are you reading and he said he said i'm reading uh so they met him and they said he's saying i'm reading the uh the the 13 tantras so it was a way that we spoke about it actually actually as we can't even list all the 13 but we uh I'm memorizing the thir the 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 twelve uh, tantras, and so what are the five sets of uh, five deities of Jusim Kempa? Yes, and so the first he said, he said Palma five five deities of Varahiri five deities of Chakshat Nikadjuna three, but the others he couldn't he couldn't list. Yeah, so you can't. So I said, uh, forget if you can't even remember the five sets of five deities, forget about knowing the 12 uh, mandalas. So the question is not passing the test, not passing the quiz. And can't even count a list of the five sets of five deities. So what are the five sets of five deities? So if I asked you, it would probably be a little difficult for you, wouldn't it? And so the five deities of, of Vajravati, the five deities of Chakrasamvara, some people also consider the five deities of Gyalogyasa, but it's not actually. It's not one of the five. So it's Vari, the five of um, Varati, five, uh, five of Ch Chakram Vara, the five of uh, Vajraha, the uh, five of Hayagriva, and the five of Tara. So there are five sets, and each of them have five deities, so the five sets of five. And so this is something that we need to know. Uh, so if someone from another lineage asks you, they say, if they say to you, well, what are the five sets of five deities you, of your karma constitution? Then you, and if you can tell them, then you, if you can't tell them, then you'll be embarrassed. Now later, Natasha Wezer, Jumotashi Wezer, went to Surmang, uh, Ga and uh, and Jekundo and Ga, Denma, Dushul Hoju and Chaptu and various other places and con conducted great activity. In particular, he taught, just as the uh, seventh Karma conducted, he taught, he taught the profound inner, inner principles and several other te teachings, and the teachings of Chakravar, Vajra and uh, Gurusamat, and teachings from the lineage. In particular. Uh, all the profound uh, dharma that he had received from the seventh karmapa, he gave them these all to the karmapa, just as if he was pouring va from one vase to another. And the eighth karmapa would say, the two lords Tashi, and treated him with the same respect as he treated Sanjay Nyempa. And then he built a new monastery at Bengar in Rongpo. And many great beings included Jatsub Jata Peljor, the monastic world, the communities of Eastern Tibet considered him a, 
as a guru to be like one of the great gurus, uh, the one guru who could be one's only guru. And he was, and he was also who could teach others the particular view and enter the practice lineage just as it was. So that is a brief introduction to the life of Dhamma Chashi Wizard. Now, so when I first met Mikyo Dorje, how did he, what was the way that he met him? When Mikyo Dorje was eight years old, he was in the area that's in the present day region of Jushu. And so during time when Mikyo Dorje came to that area, Sanjay Nyampa and Dhamma Chashi Wizard went together to the great encampment. encampment. Uh, they came to see Mikyo Dorje, and they met each other at that time. And at that time, Mikyo Dorje himself uh, felt a great faith for both Sanjay Nambarpache and Tashi Wezer, and thought to himself that uh, 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 that he uh, that they'd be wonderful to study with the two. Then later, when he reached the age of fifteen. He had a discussion with his attendants and other uh, various other people about whom he should study. And some people said that he should uh, study with Tashi Wazir. But the main thing, there wasn't really anyone who, excuse me, there wasn't anyone who said that he should study with Tashi Wazir. But Mikyo Dorje himself uh, looked at the situation and felt that Tashi Wazir was an authentic guru and invited him to the encampment and studied text with him. Now the way, what he studied with him was primarily about the tantras, Chakasamvara, the root tantras of Chakasamvara and, Gu, and Gusamava, the Vajra song, the two books of Hey Vajra, the Samputa Tantra, uh, Vajra Chatupita. So these are primarily studies of the uh, tantras, as well as the profound inner principles by Rangjan Dorje, the Supreme Continuum, uh, the philosophical schools, and also uh, poetry and grammar. In brief, he studied all the crucial secret points of practice of the the pith instructions from the Vinaya through glorious uh, uh, Suimanta. He he learned how to uh, he learned he learned how to uh, he learned the how to practice listening, contemplation, and meditation. How to engage in explaining, debating, and writing, and the general and specific understanding of the Dharma and the view and conduct of each of the three vehicles, the stages of the path of the three individuals. And so basically he said that it's uh, gaining complete uh, knowledge of the internet of the complete teachings is because of meeting Lord Tashi Wazer. As Mikyu Dorje himself said, by the power of this master's examples and blessings, I was enthralled by the three baskets, sutras, tantras, and their commentaries, the major and minor areas of knowledge for determining them, and the subtlest of terminology. I got into interest in the deliberation stories of the Bhagavan Buddha, the Bodhisattvas, and their students. I felt the joy of amazement at the deeds of the Dharma King, ministers, and translators, and panditas, an unbearable note, devotion for the root and lineage gurus. The armor for pra- holding, practicing, and preserving, and spreading the teachings. Conclu- the, the, uh, conclusion, the practice for caring for those who seek for liberation, and the methods for the Tiltain beings for the divinity age and the unconsumed metal eye uh, for what should be done should not be given up. And in brief, my great hunger for the essence for the nectar, the teachings and blessings that are listening to this Guru Kang form. So basically, his understanding of the teachings in general, in particular, his uh, understanding of the uh, stories, his understanding, his uh, interest in the liberation stories, and his uh, and his uh, great interest in the in the way that the Dharma King and the ministers and translators of the past had had acted, and so basically developing uh, d- devotion and uh, developing a good understanding is because of the kindness of his guru. He says, in particular, one thing that he felt separate, differently for Tashi Wezer. Is Atashi was very simple. He had extremely great compassion. And so when anyone else showed a physical or verbal expression due to the afflictions, such as a, an expression of a, of a temper or of hatred or of desire, then just un, un, naturally or automatically Atashi Wazer felt unbearable great compassion. And now when Mika Dorje said that he thought, he thought to himself, ah, noble, noble, I look at 
noble Avalokiteshvara must be just like this, and he felt great faith in him. Now, Tashi Weser himself was also delighted by Mikya Doja's pure intentions the, and, and the joyful strength of his and en enthusiasm of diligence when studying the uh, texts and the engagement of his intelligence when he, his great intelligence, the great progeny, when he was examining the texts, he was extremely happy to see this, as he said. Uh, so if we if we extrapolate from his holiness's present intentions and his actions and knowledge, well, I think that in the future you, your holiness, will become an omniscient master in this Lord of Snow. And so this is uh, one thing that he uh, what he said. And so what other students said is that later, Mikhail Dorje said uh, that Mikhail Dorje would later become greatly renowned as a scholar of the Sutra and Tantras. They said this is considered like a uh, this is considered a prophecy of this happening. And so this is Mikhail Dorje was still very young at that point. And from that the point, Tomotashi uh, uh, said, "You in the future will be a great scholar, a great master." And so he made that prediction. Now, actually, the, the, the period of time during which Mikhail Doja actually studied with Tachi Wizer was not very long. It was only three whole years. There are only three years, not even three full years. When I said, if it was uh, less than three years, uh, but the blessings of, um, of Tachi Wizer, you could say, if we say in contemporaries, the influence of Tachi Wizer um, lasted Mikhail Doja's entire life. And the reason for that is that and so when Mikhail Dojin met him, and when he studied text from him, because of that, Mikhail Dojin uh, developed like a real great interest and a great uh, th uh, longing uh, for the sutra and tantra and fields of Nantra. And then later for, the, for 12 years, he just spent his entire time reading text. He wouldn't relax in the daytime. And even at night, he didn't read much. He just studied the whole time. And he, and he realized that if he ate a lot of food, he would have a lot of phlegm, it's like one of the three humors, phlegm. And if he had a lot of phlegm, he would need a lot of sleep. And so for that reason, he ate very little. And also when Mikhail Dorje had audiences or conversations with people, He, he really enjoyed speaking about philosophy in the text. When, when, he was read, when he was studying and reading, when he was um, speaking, when there was some sort of a, uh, a point that came to his mind, he would immediately make a note of it. And so he'd write down the, the notes at that time. And so he continued with really great diligence for, uh, for uninterruptedly and for that, And his great enthusiasm for this uh, was primarily uh, because of the condition of Tashi Wazer's blessings. Likewise, whenever Mikhail Dojo would speak about Tashi Wazer, and so that he would say that he's very great or a great scholar, when he would remember any of the qualities of Tashi Wazer and think about them and recall them, he had this great faith really, um, really welled up. And he didn't to speak about Mikhail Dorje himself, but even the students around him could like feel the warmth of his blessings just sort of uh, coming out. It's like when you have a heater, like when you have an air conditioner or a heater, like you've got the air that comes from, it's like the, the it's like the uh, the warmth of the blessing would just come, uh, come out like that. And so, and this was, uh, and it's Mikhail Dorje's direct disciples who said that it was like this. So in brief, uh, the Mikhail Dorje wrote a liberation story of Sanjini but the undeceiving essence of Dharmakaya. This is one of two, um, uh, two liberation stories of Sanjini and one of these is called the undeceiving essence of the Dharmakaya. 
I met the Guru Dumuwesu, who was named after this caste, and he nurtured the slight bit of virtue that was already in my being, granting me the kindness of an understanding of the complete stages of the path of the Buddha's teachings. I could not repay the uh, kindness of this being, even if my body were pulverized into innumerable particles. And so the reason why I said a dumo, and so the dumo is because of, is because of his uh, caste or his clan name, Tashi Tashi is his own name, because of, as he said that by meeting it so before, it, I had some virtuous thoughts, but but they were a little bit, they weren't so they're a bit weak, and they were kind of declining. And, and and because of meeting them, then my my faith uh, did not disappear. And we're going to talk about the teachings of the Buddha, and the teaching of the four philosophical schools of Sutra and Tantra. Uh, it's because of him that I had gained an understanding of these. So it's extremely kind. So if my body were cut into tiny tiny pieces. And so made into like flour. If you make it into flour and and offered it to him as an andal, a mandala, it still wouldn't repay his kindness. And so this is what he sp said about his kindness. So that was a brief introduction to Jumatashi was and so after this, The other other gurus, uh, another gurus of Mikitorje is named Chudup Senge. So Chudup Senge, Chudup, the name Chudup Senge. And the main reason why he is included in one of, as one of the four main teachers of Mikitorje is that he was the person who gave him the full ordination. So he is the person from whom uh, Mikitorje received the victory vows. Vow, so that's why it's continued. And he also, uh, Miki Dorje also received many other teachings from him. However, but Chudu Senge, uh was just a mere student of Kajiba, but but he wasn't necessarily. These days we talk about who's which lineage, or so he was not in the Kaju lineage. In pre in old days, it would be difficult to say which lineage you're in because if you look at them, because the the lamas of the past. They'd, they'd listen to the teachings from all of the different lineages, the Sakya, uh, Gelokam, Kajyana, and so they had the lineages of all the of all of these different lineages. So what lineage were they from? It's difficult to say. So later, as later it became easier to say which uh, uh, which uh, Dharma lineage, and because you'd only because later you'd only study the the teachings from your own lineage, and so it's easy to say that you're Kajju. But in the uh, old days, it was not like that. Most of the well learned uh, and, and accomplished masters uh, studied all of the teachings of all the different lineages and they considered this very good. And they said that this is like the complete teachings and they praised during this for that reason. So he's not, a, he's not the Kaju lineage itself, but but he was the the Lama who gave Mikidoji the full ordination. And so for that reason, he's considered one of the four main gurus. Now the uh, his birthplace is in the area in the region of Tsang. There's a place called Yerusima in Tsang. His father is called Rakye, and his mother was named Losakye, and was born in 1451. When he was a child, he was called Seruicha at the age of five. He started to learn how to write right? uh, uh, from Lopin Chudup and also began learning how to recite texts and so forth. From the age of eight, he had studied many tantras, including Hayagriva and Verachana 
uh, Sarva Ved, and so he became learned them well. And so people would come to ask him and ask him to make protection cords and to distill obstructors. So you mentioned in the old days in Tibet, Uh, in, the, in old times in Tibet, high grivo was uh, very important for uh, uh, was was considered very important. And virachana savavid was used often when uh, corpses were brought to the charnel grounds and so forth. Now, and at the age of fourteen, he took the novice vows from the great holder, the Vinaya Rabdra Senge. He also received the empowerment of Hevajra. And the addition, uh, an addition that protected Namse. And so there's a particular the scripture on Namse. So Mikyo Doje uh, took the empowerment of Namse from him also. And at 18, he took the 18 in the middle from the same Kempo and the Sangha. And there was also the, uh, there's also in the presence of a Sangha. And after he had taken full ordination, If even he uh, had the smallest of downfalls, if he had a, uh, he would he would, he would uh, confess it that very same day. He wouldn't let another day pass. And so he cherished the precepts like uh, just like his eyes. And so he was considered like the 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 crown jewel among all the upholders of the Vinaya. They say. And from his kempo, he studied many dharma teachings on sutra and tantra. In particular, he uh, studied uh, many uh, pith in, in instructions and transmissions from Tantong Gyalpa, who was very well known in Tibet at the time, and other masters. Now, at the age of 20, he went to Padan Sangpur. Sangpur is someone who should know. Sangpur? Sangpur was the first Shadra in Tibet. The Sangpur Monastery was the first monastery. So it's like the Tibetan Nalanda. And now later, uh, Sangpur declined. You can, there's nothing, you, you can just sort of point out where it was, but Uh, but the situation of the Shadra and, and its condition is no longer there. But at that time, it was a very important place. So we went to Sangpura, and, and there was a great scholar then named Tensev. Uh, and so he studied a teaching combining the commentary and validity with the treasure, treasure of valid logic. He studied the three vows and mind training and so forth. And he said that it was extremely beneficial for his mind. At the age of 25, he studied the Prajna Paramita, the five Dharmas dharma of Maitreya, the upper learn dhar, Abhidharma, the root versus the middle way, and the entering the middle way with great diligence. Now, at that time, however, attempt there was a, talking about doing dark orders, is doing, is going to do, uh, is going, and so doing, uh, or doing a, a debating uh, tour. order. And so you'd go to a different uh, monastery and, do, uh, uh, and sit as a, uh, position and so the one of the, and they didn't like this and so the one of the reasons he didn't like this is because one of the one of the main reasons people went on these debating tours is that they wanted to become well known and so so you have the shadra you'd go to the you'd go to the so do when you do one of these tours you would um go to the great shadows and you do uh, become a uh, holder position if you and if it turned out well you'd become very well uh, known so And so he didn't like these things that you would do in order to gain fame. Now, when he was 30 years old, uh, 30 years old, and so he was from the Gurungamba, he went to Sapadeshi. Uh, so this is so the primary, the, 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 he went to, so there are fine, uh, there are four main monasteries where they primarily practice the teachings of the Vinaya, where you primarily practice the Vina, Vinaya itself. Now later, when there's the war of the, the Mongol wars and the, the, 
the uh, the, the the detailed practices of the Vinaya that had uh, uh, flourished in these monasteries, then later uh, declined. And the reason I say this is at the time of Siddha uh, Junior, he went on a, on a pilgrimage and he went to these four monasteries. And when he got to Tsopa uh, Drunkar, and now the monastery had been distri distributed. But when he got to that, when he got there at the Tsopa Deshi, uh, in the past, they had a very, uh, they had been a very uh, detailed practice of the diet of the Vinaya, but they had all declined by that time. And they also went to the Patru, uh, the Patru Lord of Patru. And this uh, meant that uh, uh, Kungalepa invited, invited the, the Sangha from all of these four uh, Vinaya monasteries, and they held the Yarn, the Yarne or Varsha retreat, the Rains retreat. And 100,000 monks from uh, gathered here. And in the middle of this, he gave a, a discourse about something he's similar to what we do at the uh, during the yarne uh, and so everyone said that he did very well at this now after that in the region of u there was a, a there was a, a war started and he got very despaired about that and he thought i should engage in meditation practice and he received instructions on the six applications uh, from the master of yoga, Sunam Senge. And so he received instructions on these six applications. And he received the, the scriptural and logical basis for us on the Shentong uh, view. And so Mikya Dorje, when we look at uh, Mikya Dorje's commentary, uh, when we look at the ornament of clear, different, clear realizations, and so if we look at it in one perspective, it can be called the tr the true images, uh, the false images school. In others, it can talk about the uh, of the uh, Shentong school. The real major reason they wrote this is, is that the person who asked me to teach this was probably was this Kempo. the Yenzo, uh, the Chudup Sangue himself, and so for that reason. He wrote a wrote his commentary on the uh, ornament of clear realization from the perspective of the Shantong tradition. But in any case, when he developed, when Chodam Sengye received the developed the Shantong view, he said what he says before. He said that prior to that, it was like he was looking at the meaning of the scriptures with closed eyes at night. But after that, it was looking at them with open eyes and daylight. And so it's basically saying that he really could understand the meaning of the scriptures well at that point. Then after that, he thought he should go to uh, go to some violent practice and and go to a solitary place. But 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 in the past he had received the Kenshin, um, the Red Spear of Vaishravan empowerment from Kenshin Shigeru Wanchuk. And at that point, the Kenshin had said that you have to. Uh, to oversee the Tsokte Gendungang Monastery and made him make the promise to, to oversee that. And he realized he could not break his promise. And so he started as the discipline master and eventually became the uh, abbot of the Gendungang Monastery. And so he spent his whole life as a leader, both spiritually and politically, at Tsokte Monastery, Gendungang. And then he so when we talk, when we talk about the two places of from Kunga Namkyo, we talk about two of the great masters, of Ngor and Zong. So Zongba it means the Bukhanya. He followed his gurus, Shama Chodha Chatsu, the fourth Shama Chenga Chodha, Lingme Pandita, Shalulo Chen, and Jenyupa, and others, and studied many sutras and tantras and fields of knowledge. But I don't need to go into detail on that. Now, in terms of how he conducted his activity. When he was uh, uh, 25 years old, at Paldon Sampo, uh, that great shadow that he mentioned, he wrote a supplementary text on the project. Now, a supplementary text means, what this means is, it's not the main text that would be taught in a class, but it'd be the class, but is it on the side, you'd have a, um, a traitor, then someone is, 
and then you'd have like you'd have review sessions where you would the students places where students could ask questions and and so forth and so it was used for those so it's a supplement to that at the age of 20 um 25 uh gonko Dempo was one of his most important lives and he studied the sutra and tantra then at 25 uh, he became the Kempo of Kendon Gampa. And so that is when that happened. Yeah, so then in 15, 1506, uh, he was invited by Shama Chirka Ch Ch uh, Ch uh, and received the uh, the hundred, the complete Nyingma Tantras and so forth, the end parts of the ocean of the Dakinis and so forth. And at that time, there was also Chaklo Tsawa, the the uh, and there are many uh, Denzatel and Artang, the campus of Nyining and so forth. There are many uh, students with whom he uh, made uh, Dharma connections. And then after that, Mikitorje invited him, and he went to Kongpo, and gave him the full ordination. After he'd given them a notion that he did, Mikitorje said, "Please stay for a while." But he said that the the climate didn't suit him, the 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 weather didn't do well, and he had also, and he was so the, there was a lord of Yardjap, so one of the many uh, lords in central Tibet, and he had made a promise to visit the Yardjap. So he uh, he was not he returned to central Tibet, and when he stopped, uh, and he was on the way back to central Tibet. He stopped at Drikun Monastery and spent five days there, and then uh, went via uh, Hasa to Yajju, to Yajja. And he met the met the Lord and his wife and children. Now at that time, um, a lot of students uh, came to see him, but he said to them, uh, "I'm not going to remain long." He, he predicted. And then, when he was 80 years old, in 1530, on the seventh day of the sixth lunar month, he said, "I'm leaving." He said, so I spread my love, so spread my mat. And the meaning of, I'm not sure if I understood this. It's not, it didn't say spread my mat, it said, it said send my mat. So basically do something with my mat, he said. And so those around him said, if you're going to go to a pure realm, who should we take as our perfect protector and refuge? When they asked this, he said, don't engage in grudges of mental clinging. You are all never separate from me. So I'm basically saying, don't don't be attached. This means the attachment of self clinging, of ego clinging. Uh, do not have any ego clinging. You are never separate from me, he said. He said this three times, <clears throat> and then after that, without any sign of illness, is sitting in the seven pointed posture of Virachana, and right there he passed away. It's not like, you know, he got sick and lay down the way we usually do. He just sat right there in the seven uh, points of posture and passed away. We can't even sit in the seven points of Vedachana when, when we when alive. And he sat in these when, in the seven points when he uh, was passing away. And that's really, really wondrous, isn't it? Then there is also the talk about how, I'd like to speak about how he was invited to see Mika Dorje, but I think now we need to take the uh, the break. And so when we come back, then I will immediately re recommence with this. So now I spoke in, uh, in brief about Kenjin Shudut Singe's liberation story. I have received an old, uh, a copy of an old liberation story of Chudup Singh, and I think if we read this, we can know about, we can learn about his life. So now I'd like to speak about, in general, about how Chudup Singh was invited to see Mikya Dorji and give him full ordination. So as I mentioned earlier, Uh, the Mahasiddhis Sangyin Yemba uh, 
had a, uh, had a had a bad foot, as I said. So one day, as uh, so one day when his when his uh, uh, foot was uh, was was hurting and it was actually very painful, Mikhail Dorje was with him, and so at that time, <coughs> Sanjay Nemba said to him. So my, so, uh, because of my uh, bad foot, I thought I should give offerings of Shamachu uh, Gajapa. And he thought that he sh should give, a, he he wanted to give it, uh, given he could have given the offerings. Um, but he thought it would, uh, I, be, 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 he thought it would might offend the seventh karmapa, and so he didn't offer the fourth shama chenga chuda, uh, these offerings. And so later, in, in a vision or in a dream or in some sort of a pure vision, whenever he saw chenga rinpoche, his uh, his face was not clean, uh, not clear. It was like it was a little bit uh, a little bit fuzzy. And so, for instance, when he thought about uh, shama chenga. His foot would hurt, and so, and so later, in, and so I think it's because I didn't serve uh, uh, Shama Rinpoche well that my foot went bad. He thought, and so for that reason, so I thought I think that it would be good if you could take the uh, take the full ordination from the Shama Rinpoche, but because of of the leaders of the encampment and because of many other people. Uh, said that the previous uh, Shama uh, 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 Chenga had uh, uh, had broken a samai and so forth. That's a little difficult. So, so he asked him what he thought. And so at that point, then Mikhail Dorje, I said, "I will do whatever you tell me to do." And Yember Rinpoche said that it made a little plan. And so they are probably in the region of Kam. And so they prepared to go to central Tibet. So though they made these plans, uh, didn't they did not work out? And Ch uh, Chengar Rinpoche uh, passed away quickly. Chengar Rinpoche passed away quickly, and the people in the encampment Uh, were reluctant to go to uh, to central Tibet, and so Shama Shemesh had passed away. So he was not able to receive the full ordination from the Shama Chenga uh, Shama Chuda. And so when he thought about whom he should receive the vows from, he spoke with other people about this. And the reason for this is that he's. He sent a letter to uh, Kama Tr uh, Trinipa saying, uh, you should come and see me. And within that, he said, I'd like to take the full ordination. And so he also sent it to who would be the best Lama for me to take full or ordination from? And Kama Trinipa said, so that Kenshin Chudu Sutra is uh, really very good. And so he shared that opinion. Uh, so there is uh, shared that opinion with Mikhail Dorje as is discussed. And Kenshi Chodujasa himself, what he said is that, is that in the past, when the seventh Karmapa Chodujasa I uh, uh, came to Gendan Gan that there's a really good interdependent connection. And the reason is that at that time, and so at that time they, they had invented a, a golden procession to welcome him. And they were in the procession. So each person had a, had a different thing to hold in their hands. And they, they, you know, they, they stand in a line, and so what he had was a golden mandala. It was a really beautiful mandala. 
and there are piles of with piles of jewels of many different colors. And she was holding this, so it's basically his turn to read that. And because of that connection, and likewise, Uh, when they were, when they were making the offerings, is able to make an offering of the it. He's able to make an offering of the. It's uh, his turn to long to make an offering of that. And also, when uh, the karma is later giving gifts. The seventh Karmapa, he had the fortune to receive a very nice Namdara outer robe from the seventh Karmapa. Likewise, when the seventh Karmapa uh, Churachasa went down to the region of Kongpo, at that time he thought. And if you read the l stories of the previous Buddhas, they would sit, they would uh, throw grains, uh, actually they'd throw lentils. Um, and so for that reason, he threw a few grains or some few lentils and it's uh, in the mention of the And so he made the, uh, uh, he made an aspiration to uh, Raz um, Bodhicitta. And at that point, the seventh Karmapa looked at him and smiled. And so from that point, he thought that, and so in this lifetime, uh, these, these made the connections for me to need to be the uh, the Kempo to give Mikidoje full ordination. And so this is what uh, Kenji Chura Senge himself said. So one thing that you all need to know is that from the time of the third up or Anjun Dorje, Almost all of the uh, Kamapas have taken uh, had taken vows at the Tso uh, Gendungang Monastery. And the Tso Gendungang and the and the various Karmapas had a great connection. And so then there's a saying at Ken, uh, Kambo Gendungang that the that they that uh, that uh, that for each of them, each of the incarnations of the Karmapas was an incarnation of the uh, sixteen ar arhat arhats uh, would ap would appear for each of them. So, so, so Chudut Sangha as well uh, was said to be uh, was said to be an, uh, uh, an emanation of the arhat of the arhat Yanak Chung or. And so the person from Huch, there are many, there are many different lamas uh, from whom the Karmapas take the four different. But at the Gendun Sampa, they, when you talk about the four uh, places, uh, places, this is one of the main monasteries uh, where the uh, Vinaya was uh, emphasized back to them. So they had most respect for that, they considered very important. And so the Karmapas would go there, or and then receive the um, the uh, lineage of vows from there. And so for those reasons. And so it's decided that uh, uh, Chudut Senge would give him the uh, the uh, f uh, f uh, for the full ordination vows. Mr. Dordi wrote and wrote a similar letter, which said, "I wish to take the as a full ordination. You have the qualities of a venerable noted upholder of the Vinaya, so please come here. If you think that the road will be hard and do not come, you will fall away from the Bodhisattva's conduct." Uh, this is a rather uh, it's a rather strict letter. Uh, when uh, Chudut Sentry uh, opened up the letter, it said the very sign that they were blowing a conch in the puja. He said, oh, this is a really good uh, connection. And so he was very pleased about this. But at that time, how old was he? He was 79 years old. So he was 79 years old already. He would have to go from central Tibet all the way, all the way down to Kongpo, which is a several months journey. For one thing, he was very old. And second thing is it is very difficult. 
There weren't any cars or airplanes in those days. There were no trains. You had to ride the horse and you had to go like that all the day. I don't know if they even read the horses. There are also people who didn't read horses, you know. People who didn't read uh, animals, ride animals. He said, I can't come. And he sent that in, in a response saying, I can't come. Misha Doje once again sent somebody. To, he sent uh, uh, people to come and insist that he come. And so he, since he was so insistent, And so it's because the teachings, because he had such a profound teaching, uh, because of the teachings and the general, because he had such a profound contention with the previous, uh, be, between the Tsokte and the previous Karmapa. So he decided to go to uh, Kamata. So on the, from the third day, the ninth month of the year, Pig, he went down, he met the great transit, and I'm not sure which one it is. I think it's probably Shalu Lotsawa. He said he met a great uh, Lotsawa. So I think it's probably Shalu Lotsawa. And they discussed the Dharma. And then eventually, they went. He went to, they arrived at the uh, on the at the Great Encampment in the eleventh Tibetan month. When they arrived on the uh, Great Encampment, then that same day, he met Mikyo Dorje. Uh, then he rested for a few days because he was very old, and he had walked. Uh, he had come the whole way, so. He needed a few days to rest. And then on the 23rd day, he offered him the full ordination vows. And on that day, there weren't any clouds or anything in the sky. It was a very clear, a clear sky. And within that, there was um, a, there was a rainbow in the sky and rain of flowers followed. And that. And every day after that, he went to see Mikya Dorje. And they would discuss the difficult points of Sutra and Tantra. And I think that he probably also introduced him to the Shantung view at that time, too. And he gave Mikadoje the uh, empowerment of Antaeus and the initiation of Red Spear Veshlavana. And so as uh, this is the connection that the histories record. So Mikadoje himself wrote Namtara of Sangyan Yemperdan in which it says, at that time, I received the blessings of serving the great Kampo of Tsok uh, Gendendong, an individual who was emanated by the great Siddhas from the tradition of the omniscient Jonang, who was certain to go from this life to the presence of the Dharma king in Shambhala, the Guru Precious Buddha Shudit Senge, and the great being born as Jai Kamache, who uh, transcends humans, a master of yoga, a god victorious over all di directions, whose mind has been ripened well by some idol and disciplines. Also, it says in an autobiography, he says, I received full ordination from a song, including the, the scholar and great meditator, Chudup Senye, and the great meditator, Yogi Kamachinipa. They were the abbot and acharya, and they were like nurses who raised infinite intelligence about the sutras Thomas. Because of them, the accumulation and purification of listening and contemplation in my is, in this degenerate time, not limited. And so what Mikidorde himself was saying here is, So in this lifetime, one of the greatest, uh, the one of the, the greatest things he did was to receive the full ordination. There's no greater deed that he did than that, and to receive this from a great emanation of an of, uh, of an arhat, uh, from him was good. And so, if he even would to speak about it, there's no way he could describe it. And so, and so as a and so he also kept um, uh, he kept all uh, a set of all of uh, of Chudup Senge's hair that when he that that Chudup, that Chudup Senge had cut at that time he kept that and within that there appeared many relics. In Kenshin, Chudup Senge himself. So on the day that he gave the full ordination to Mikidojide. There was a high pass. Excuse me, on the on the way to see this, he went to Kumbo, Kumbo Bale, and when he climbed up there, and he was when he was resting his mind and and mind and body, and he dreamt that he went up there, and so for that, and so my being able to, so this, uh, so he was called. So he was called the Jodan. The reason why he was called the Jodan Kempo, and the reason he was called this. 
is because it's from one of the the four of the they stay they would uh they would um uh, also they they become uh, so he never he, because he didn't ever eat food after he's called a uh, jodempa because he only sat on a single foot so the of uh, the so basically meeting that he'd eaten one meal so he thought to himself by giving the full ordination my intentions have been fulfilled and when i gave him and when he, he saw so that when he gave mikidorje the uh, amitana he also he also dreamt that he made many tzatzas and the, each of these then multiplied into many and they covered a great area so he, this is a dream that he had and so for that reason, and so he said that because of this, that Mikodorji would have a long life, a long life and vast activity. And Kenjin Chudit Senge, uh, said to uh, Mikodorji's student, uh, Sanjay Padra, the day that I met Mikodorji, I felt a, a great faith. The way that he spoke and, and acted with his body, speech, and mind. Like there, was an, there were no stains of, of attachment or aversion, and it, that's how it appeared to me. And when speaking to him, when speaking about the main points of the Dharma, and when we discussed and he asked about this, he'd get right to the main point. He would always uh, get straight to the point of the Dharma. And so if he's someone so young, has a really, for someone so young, he has a really deep founded in Dharma. So if you had a discussion from one today, another, the discussion got uh, got brighter and brighter and uh, weightier and weightier. It's in, I mean, his intelligence is growing stronger and stronger. And this is something that we ordinary sentient people people cannot get our minds around or 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 conceive of. And so, for that reason, if you can, and so at the it's at the karmapa is really as pure an individual as described in his um, in the life stories of the karmapas. And so in this way, he praised uh, Mikidorje very highly. And likewise, when he, he said that when I uh, when I pass uh, pass away, he said I'm going to go to Shambhala and meet the uh, Karmapa Chidachatso and so forth. And so he said this is a, this is a great fortune that he had. So after this, I'd like to speak about the fourth. Of Mikidor uh, Mangos or Chotli Nabur Gewehla, also known as Karma Chinepa. He was born in in Trukta in Dakpo. And he was in the and he was born. There it's in many different areas. There is a Kurapa, Lord Kurapa. So there is the uh, of, of Kurapa, and he was born in the family of of this lord. There are many, of course, in that region, there are many lords, but Kurapa wasn't the greater lord. So he was born to one of his uh, commanders of, of his army named Dungeon Sunamtashi. And also, uh, his name Sunamtashi, and the mother was named Rishan Dulma in the 1456. And he was a nephew of Tashi Namja, who was a Sakya company, <clears throat> was a Sakya uh, scholar. When he was uh, little, he entered Sunkara Monastery. <coughs> Excuse me, Sunkara um, uh, Medical College. So there are two lineages of medical treatment in in uh, in Tibet. There's a Chang and the Sur lineage. And so, so Sur, the Sur Monastery, is is primarily uh, maintained by the Karmakaji lineage, and within that, uh, the Surkar Nanyi Dorje. was like the real source of the sort of, uh, of the sort of tradition med, med, medical studies and so we went to study there and he also studied uh the uh, nyingma teachings on the church then at the age of 17, 17 he went forth with the elder uh sampa then later at the age of 37 
he took full ordination of Shama Cheng, uh, Cheng Hachuda in um, uh, Neo Dong. And so he took it one day, and the next day, so he took it one day, and the next day he had to take, uh, he had to act as the Acharya or master in, in a full ordination center because there's so many people coming to take as the vows. And at the age of 20, he took the, uh, uh, the uh, from Sangye Pel, the champion, the uh, scholar of the five treatises of Man Maitreya, he took the Bodhisattva vows. We talk about this uh, scholar of the five trinity centers, Sanjay uh, Pell. He was the first one to be given the name Rab Jamba, given the title of Rab Jamba. And he had many students, Gorampa and Gesawa and Jamba Kungasunam and many others. And among them, uh, Kamachinneba is one. So in Tibet, he is the first Rab Jamba, the first to have the title of Rab Jamba. And if talk about these days we talk about Geshe La Rampas and Dorams and Ram Ram. That Ram means from Rab Champa. Uh, so before the uh, Jam before that people would say Kashipa. Kashipa were the five the four the four words. It would mean someone who had uh, passed a, a debate test on the four uh, great texts. And from uh, from Gatsa Dhamma Rinchen, added the five, and they added one, they called the, and they added, they said, they said, they added six times, so they've, so Gatsa Dhamma was, uh, was the first of these called the Kachupa, the, the 10 lineage, or the 10 text uh, test. But in any case, we talk about the, from Sanjay Pell, the scholar of the five trinities, he took the Bodhisattva vows, as well as the uh, Aguya Samaja, Samaja Mandala, and therefore the, the mantra vows as well. And then also, there was uh, someone named Shadarab Jampa, named, uh, called the second Milarepa, and he received the, uh, the six dharmas of Nigo and Sukha City and so forth. And also from, from uh, Duchen Chubur, who was probably a study of student of Shura Chasa, from him he received the uh, fivefold five fold Mahamudra and other teachings. In a certain room, there was a Nyalde Drum monastery, and he, and he taught this Pajnaparamita there in the midst of 700 Sangha members. And the father with uh, Loban Sene Gompo and with uh, Geshe Gen uh, Lundra, uh, the Jamlin Pension Sunam Nanja, uh, that he made Dharma connections with all of them, received many teachings. And from Gonkar Doji Dempa, he received uh, Vajrakila and the Vajra Song and other texts. There was also a master named Desangpa, from whom he received the Sanskrit grammar, Tibetan grammar, and other general fields of knowledge. Okay, Moskia. And once again, studied with Sanjay, uh, the the Jamjan Ram Champa, uh, Sanjay Pal. He studied the Nadgarjuna study of of Sukhoya Samaja. Um, so he also studied the ornament of clear realization, the commentary on validity, Vinaya Abhidharma, the root text in the middle and entered into the middle way and became learned in all of these. And also at that time, uh, there was a Panjim Bhutra, Sumpa. He studied the five treatises of Mantra and Amitai Sutra and other sutras. He studied Prajnaparamita, the thunder of scripture and logic with Penchen Dundup Jyatsam, the wish fulfilling tree, and the pile of flowers, the text on composition, among others. And so he, he received many teachings, empowerments, and transmissions from many great um, scholars and meditators. And later, he thought they ought to go. Uh, uh, he thought he should go to debate in the great monastery of Zedang, but his elder brother summoned him, and so he was not able to go. So later, he received uh, uh instructions on the six yo uh, yogas from Shamachita Chengajutism and many other teachings. And then on the seventh day of the fifth learning month of the female fire shape year, he met uh, Chodha Chasa, and from that time on, he never thought of uh, Chodha Chasa as anything other than an actual Buddha. And there's also a, a letter that Chodha Chasa that 
the uh, in the letter that showed Jason, he said many places said we too have a strong uh, connection from aspirations in, pre in previous lives, saying that they're master and student. So for many lifetimes before, uh, uh, he developed the certainty that Kshota Jasa was a lama whom he had studied studied with for many lifetimes. He also received the instructions on the indivisible progeny awareness. And at that time, if you Kshota Jasa said, if you have promised to uphold my lineage, I will give it to you. And so Karmatam said, I will uphold this Kaju lineage and made that commitment. And then at that time, and then only then did he give him an experiential instruction on the six yogas of Naropa. And that instruction took five months. And during that time, he was staying near the encampment in, in a small tent, I think. And so when he'd go to the, when he'd take the teachings, he'd go to the Karmapa, when in other times he would go back and stand retreat and uh, practice. And, and he developed the amazing signs that are taught and explain the text. And so then he received teachings on the co-emergent yoga of Mahamudra, the four dharmas, the jewel ornament of liberation, and so forth. He received uh, teachings on Vajravarahi and Jyavajatsa, the middle way views and minor and the minor texts that teach on how the Rangtong, Rangtong and Shentong are not contradictory, and as well as the transmission of Ranjan Dorje's complete works. He also received uh, detailed explanations of the profound principles in the auto commentary five times. And he also had teachings on the two short time. So there are four of these great, the, these uh, received instructions on the four short texts by Tantra. And he also received the uh, em empowerments of the five mandalas of the Ngotlage, including the instructions. And followed, and so he followed Shuddha Jasso as his root guru. Then following that, there was a student of Shuddha Jasso uh, named Jamba Gyasso from whom he received teachings on Chu. Uh, from Siddhartha Padra, he received the Guhima Samadha tradition as well as uh, the Krishna Pada tradition of Chaksamvara. And so he received uh, a lot of touchings from many different uh, masters, and I don't need to list them all in detail. Now, to, to discuss how he um, uh, so in central Tibet, there were he went to look for. Uh, Chukor Lumbo and he built a, there's a Sakya Bamansan, there's a big statue of this istitra that was 25 palms tall. So palms, it's a palm is about that size. And so he built a statue that's that size. Uh, so at that time, so in the region of Moon, he said, he said, he said, uh, he said that he made a, he developed a paper factory that he made in different places uh, uh, to make a different size and different thickness and so forth. And so this this is later this uh, this um, it was called the Chujel paper, and this is considered the best paper for printing a text. And so this is uh, was developed by Karma Chinle. He also was at a place called Tiura. He started a, a founded a shutter in the Sakya tradition. Later, then Chujo Chapa invited the seventh Karmapa and offered the Chukor Thumpa monster that he'd been built along with all its statues and so forth, as well as a, a Sangha of 500 monks, including his younger brother. And he offered them to the, these were the Karmapa. And the Karmapa appointed Karmatunipa as its abbot. So Kamatunipa uh, probably was given to him at that time. So Kamatunipa is actually a, a rank, right? And so it was given to him at that time. So it's when he was made the when he was made the abbot there. He, he made a a, a reliquary statue for Goshri Pachadunda uh, that was basically one story tall. 
Then he, there were 500 monks at the at the Chukarlumpa, so he divided into four groups and started the beginning instruction on them. In particular, uh, he taught primarily the teachings of the Chapa. And so it's basically, it's basically from that area, from Chapa Chukor. So at that time when Chapa and Kamachilipo at that point, but at that time, it was like the the uh, the most the time time with this uh, uh with these teachings uh, flourished the most and then then once uh, Chukalumpa became well then he once again offered it all in Tantaya to the seventh Karmapa and the and as his replacement uh, uh, the seventh Karmapa appointed Tashi Namjo Cha Tashi Namjo to he's probably a student of of um, the seventh Karmapa. And so there are many texts by him, uh, many uh, examinants and others. Dributapa. Uh, so this is a, dis a way of determining whether, uh, uh, whether just talk, talking about examining materials, look of, of, of jewels or bells and so forth. So Kamachinipa himself uh, spent some time at a mountain tree, Ratna retreat. And then the Garchen went to Hwasa. And when the, the Gachan went to Lhasa, then Kamatliba also went with them. So not that time. The great Angsman, because he had a, a rank, gave him a, 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 so he's put at the head of the right-hand row. So, and at that time, in Lhasa, there is a Kamatatsang monastery called uh, uh, Kamakansa Monastery in Hasa. So the the, the, look, the place is still there. So in the Kamadatsang Monastery, he was appointed its Lama, and he was allowed to have uh, a parasol, but if and he said to have uh, attendants and, and retainers and so forth. And so he gained that right at that point. So at that point, at the Ramoche uh, Monastery, Uh, he um, he began teachings on the Lamp of the Three Worlds, the seventh Karmapa's text on Prajnaparamita. And then, then some in the area around the uh, the the Jo extension, he made a later foundation for Dupin Chokor, a new place. Now there's some difficulties or complications that happened because at that point in the area of Flaxen there was Daipung and Sera and other monasteries, right? And so So, and so they misunderstood this, and the Karmapa is doing this, making a big monastery there. So they thought he was trying to take power. And so there was a conflict that arose at that time. So I'm not going to speak too much about that now. And so this was, uh, he built this uh, place called the Tuchen, Tupchen, or Tupchen Chukor, that was built there. And he uh, built that and they completed the temple and so forth and gathered a great a great uh, song a great, gathered a great song of monks and so it was primarily and so he was prim the primary abbot and leader of the monastery and the plan was that this would be a monastery where they would um, uh, practice the Vinaya and the reason for this is that at that time the seventh Karmapa himself had a pure vision. And it's because at, the, at that time, around the uh, the Joel statue, there were lots of uh, lay people living in that area. And for that reason, thought that was not such a good um, circumstance for the Jokan. So I thought if there, if there were uh, monks who uh, practiced the Vinaya purely in that area, then it would be very good. So he made that uh, Prediction, and so and also the and also the 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 Lord of Flasa offered him the place, and so he built the monastery. But that, but not long after it was built, then uh, then Chodajasa passed away, and after he passed away, then during the time of the eighth Karma Bhajana, they didn't really take good care of it because in the past there was a conflict over it. He said that there's he said that there's uh, the this source for conflict, and so did not take much care. Later the 
uh, the the buildings fell into disrepair and it fell down and there was grass growing through them and so forth. So after the uh, uh, and after the sum karma passed away, in order for the to fulfill the meanings of uh, uh, there is a period. So he'd fill his wishes that it took from a period he made an good offerings in order that this this would occur. So the tradition of making great offerings uh, in in order for Tulko to quickly uh, uh, to make to make the Tulko appear quickly. So at that point, so uh, Kalimpana made a great offering with a lot of salt actually. And actually, salt you need is it? You can do without sugar, but you can't do without salt. So since you absolutely have to have salt, so he gave uh, seven uh, two thousand bushels of, of salt because in the old days. Salt was considered really important. Salt and and gold were probably were considered to be about the same in importance. And so, for that reason, he gave uh, two thousand bushels of um, of salt. And in the region of in the Tuchin uh, uh, monastery, he built a large statue of the of the uh, Buddha. And at that point, there are three hundred members of the Sangha. Yeah, then, in the fifteen uh, fifteen oh four, the Woodbird year, he so Kama Datsang at that point. So there's like the, they needed like a, that was that was probably, a, the, they needed a new Shedra, uh, so they founded the uh, Kama Lek Shiling. So the, the Ch- Chijay Lama Punzok has uh, founded a new monastery called a Kama Lek Shiling there, and he probably used the name of Karma Lecture Ling as to take the name for his monster. I've heard people say this to me. So this Lecture Ling um, monastery he built there, and it was primarily a Shadra. And he also built a place called uh, Chanchup Ling with a Chime Chanchup uh, po- uh, Palace. He started a Shadra there. And then primarily they taught the Tantra. So the Lekshe Ling was primarily the Sutras, and Changchu Ling was primarily a, a Tantric Shedra. So Lekshe Ling, he built many uh, statues of, of body, speech, and mind there. Now I don't need to explain them all now. So in brief, Jakamba Chimba had, had founded several monasteries, and the main of them, and, and the main ones were the Shedras that taught the Sutra and the Tantras, as well as the practice of the Vinaya. And then in, the, in 1527, he met Mikudorj. And he taught him a lot of uh, t- a Dharma about the Sutra and Tantras. Not only that, uh, along with Kenshin uh, uh, Senge, he gave the Eighth Karma and Mikudorj the vows of full ordination. And so he became a very important Lama of Mikidorje. And Mikidorje himself also. <laughs> wrote over 10 prayers and long life prayers and so forth. And he said, he said that he was someone uh, who had received the a level of supreme worldly dharma on the path of joining. And so saying that he had uh, basically achieved some level on the path. So now his collected works have over 10 volumes and among them you can pr- and most of these are still extant to, the, to this day. I think you can still get them. In the end at the age of 84 in 1539 he passed away. And after he passed away his students he had many students among the Sakya lineage he had many among the Kaju lineage. And the reason for this is he initially was Sakyapa, a holder of the Sakya lineage. As I mentioned, he was he was like the main student of the Chamchen Rao Chandra Sangyapa. And later became the student of Chura Chatsa and became an, uh, an, uh, an important upholder of the Kaju lineage. And so he was respected both the Sakya and the Kaju, and for that reason. His student, he had many students from both uh, the Sasaka and the Kaju. So, so the way the 
So I think it's probably best for me to speak about how Miki Dorje followed him as a guru. Uh, and I'll speak about them tomorrow. And the reasons, because I think about today, today, my brain is, it's not working too well today. And so I don't know if it's got tired today or something. It's not working well today. And so for here, I'll leave it at this point. So I will speak about how he uh, how he followed uh, Kama Trinlepa and how and how Mikhail studied the area, various areas of knowledge. This is not very clear in many Dharma histories or liberation stories, but I found one uh, one text that it is very clearly described, and so I'll describe that uh, tomorrow. And so that is what we'll do. But but the biggest worry I have is that. So we've gone to seven days of teachings, but we've only gone through three or four stanzas. And so I'm thinking, when am I going to finish the entire good deeds? And when am I even going to be halfway through it? So I do worry about this, but but I'm pretending that I'm not worried and still taking my time. And think, otherwise, if I if I you know worry too much, then I think it'll you know create faults and obstacles for a teaching. So, as much as I can, I'm going to try to teach the entire uh, good deeds and praise these shirts thoroughly. But I don't want to just read it as if I, you know, the reciting a text. I want to, it's important that I tell the important points. So even if I don't do the whole thing now, then there's no other point. So maybe we'll have to continue next year. But my plan is to teach them in full this year. Uh, so I thought it'd be good to explain this to you all now. Now, so this is not something that's really important, but something to say on the side. The other, the, uh, the other day, I spoke a little bit about the about the steward of Changzi, right? When I spoke about that, many people have been asking me about this. Where is this Changzi? Where is this steward? When you ask, then they probably think that they need to go look for him and make difficulties for him. I said, Chongzi passed away, I said. Because if you need to go make a fuss about it, it's better not to go, if you go. If you, otherwise, you'd have to go where uh, Chongzi has gone, and that wouldn't be good, sir. And better to stay where you are, where you are. So when I spoke about this, I didn't, this sort of slipped out on the side. I didn't think I should speak about that at first, but, but it just sort of uh, came out. When you're thinking about the difficulties and problems that Mikio Dorje faced, and in order to make it was clear, I just decided to add a little bit from my own life. But the Chancellor himself has passed away. Uh, so, does, so I don't have any th 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 uh, thought that uh, he's uh, he's did something to me, so I need to get back at him. So if he, so I'm just, I'm just I just remember him when I think of when I tr intentionally try to think about it, but otherwise I hardly recall him. So that is it. So thank you.